What's up, everybody? My name is Erin, and welcome to the Mad Maker Studio, and welcome back for more of Where the Water Tastes Like Wine. We finished Ray's story last time, and I do not have another plan. We'll just see who's close by and see them next and see if we can pick up any more stories along the way. Let's do a quick check on our stories. We have 180 now out of the 237 that are still out there. This kindly old man sharing the shade under the bridge with you tells a few rambling stories, some true seeming, some conspicuously less so. All true, he assures you. There's history in this place, going all the way back to Indian times. Strange stuff happens round here. That can't all be true. Sure it is, he scoffs, and then as if to prove himself right, he launches into a story about the cookhouse where sinners work off their debt to hell. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and this one, you know, is the story of the cookhouse that serves hungry travelers, but wilder and stranger than you remember. I know that one. I was there. See you then, the old man laughs. So I ain't pulling your leg. It's all true. Move on. Now, I think I went to El Paso last time. Uh, we could not earn money. Oh, I stand corrected. Uh, we need money and we need health. So let's try to do that real quick. You wander the streets of the city looking for a way to make some cash. I think we panhandled last time. So let's look for work this time. Miraculously, you're one of the first people in line when this factory's doors open. You join a crowd of people streaming through the machine room toward the back. When the doors open to the furthest storage room, though, the folks in the front ranks recoil. A few even scream. What the heck? You wanna get paid, don't ya? Shouts the foreman. Get in there, get in. The folks behind you shove forward and soon you're pushed inside. Oh my god, this room is full of effing snakes. <laughs> we'll stay in work. Grab them, shouts the foreman passing out nets. They're harmless. The remaining workers get over their fear and start scooping up snakes by the netful. The beasts hiss pathetically. You dump them in a chute in the far wall. This better pay well. It does pay pretty well. During lunch, you rest on the warehouse floor. The snakes pile up in a corner and you watch and watch you all with enormous suspicion. It's then that you glance out a window and notice a fading logo on a sign outside. Sylvester Bros fine boots. Poor snakes, and that is so effing sad. But we got paid. What can we get at the store for our heart? Okay, in it. So sandwich or quesadillas, and that'll fill up our heart. It only takes half our money. Well, we're near the border, so let's get some quesadillas. All right, we are good to go. Let's take a quick look at our map. Oh, we can go see Rocio. Yeah, let's cut across, see if there's any stories maybe hiding around here. Ugh, these effing mountains. <laughs> The two youths jump when they hear you. Oh, thank fuck. Thought you were our pa. The boys are near identical. Tall, ash blonde, blue eyed and smothered in freckles. Even their temperaments seem alike. Their quick smiles are gleeful. Do us a favor, would you? What? We need you to take these sheep away. He points at the sheep. The tiny lamb is suckling. Its wool is blood-stained. Can only be a few hours old. I don't care what you do with them. We just need them off the farm. Why? Revenge, mostly. The boys are grinning. Was that a joke? Pa gave Lenny. Lenny nods. A beating for stealing from our neighbors. Wouldn't listen. It was me, not him. So we're gonna hurt Pa back. He was up all night. It was breech birth. He'll feel the loss. What do I need? No, that's too cruel. Well, you can fuck off then. Was that Lenny? 
or the other one. They're just another fucking do good. Think we want to steal? Not like Pa pays us for our work. We take what we deserve. The look the boy and his brother share is vicious. Maybe it would have been better for me to take them because I feel like they're going to kill them. And I do not like that. That sits very heavily in my gut. And these twin boys are little assholes. And, you know, it ain't about you. It's about these sheep. The little lamb that was born. And you're being dicks about it. So screw you guys. I'm moving on. As you head away from the field, you pass the porch of a farmhouse. An old man lies in it, dozing. He's surely the twin's father. I can either let him sleep. I'm going to tell him of the twin's plans. Maybe he can get over there before they hurt those sheep. The man stands, yawning apologies. At your words, he sits again heavily. I don't know what to do. I've tried everything. I'd see him off the farm, but they'd have to believe I'd follow through on my threats before they'd go. He sighs. What did I do wrong? I don't know, man. I gotta go. I'm leaving. <laughs> need to go east. Do I need to cross the river? Yes. It looks like it. The grackle perches on a fence post at the border of the farm. Fields have been stripped clean. A man lies on his front in the dirt. Seeds spilling out from the sack he holds in one hand. Please. His voice thin with exhaustion. It wants more. So we've got a Cerberus but for birds situation going on. Sure, I guess we'll feed the bird. You take the sack. The bird's heads turn in rhythm as six eyes assess you. More, it says, a multi-voiced croak. You're not sure which head to feed, so you just hold out your seed-filled hand. It pecks you hard enough to draw blood. More. Uh, I don't want to give it more, but I guess that's what we're going to do. You carefully feed it a handful of seed. More. You know, you've got three heads. I think you're perfectly capable of hunting on your own. But I'll feed you more and see what happens. You cautiously feed it a handful of seed. More. Okay, now I'm just curious to see how far this goes. You tentatively feed it a handful of seed. More. You delicately feed it a handful of seed. More. There is no more. Sack is empty. The man groans. It'll eat anything. That was all I had left. My family's inside. Please. The bird looks at you. The man. The house. More. The bird insists. I can't or awful or offer a morsel of yourself. I'm already dead, so I don't think I have much to lose. So sure, I'll offer a morsel of myself and see what happens. You offer your empty hand. The bird regards it for a second and stabs its right beak forward and slices out a chunk of your flesh. The middle head squawks and the right one tosses the meat up. Middle head catches it and swallows. All three look back to you. More. If I keep going, is it going to send me straight to Mr. Wolf? 
again, I'm I'm a big old skeleton boy. I believe I'm already dead. What do I really have to lose? You keep your hand steady. Left head leans in and nibbles at your damaged flesh. It's a delicate pain. A series of snips so small and precise that anyone alone would be nothing. But the bird keeps taking until you're forced to snatch your bloodied hand back. More. I was kind of hoping that by giving a piece of myself to these birds, or this one single bird with three heads, that it would make it sick. But that doesn't appear to be the case, and I've I feel like you know, all my health is already gone. This might send me straight to Mr. Wolf. Let's find out. Right head will have its share. It shuns the old wound, makes a fresh incision, gulping down what it tears from you. The bird's beaks drip red. As you jerk your hand back, the bird bursts into flight. Thank you. The man chokes. You hear a cry on the breeze. More. That is so bizarre. Oh, I die. <laughs> I, I saw that coming, but sure, let's continue. Ah, so we meet again. Bad luck again, but there's no shame in dying. Everyone does it. But how many people do you think do it more than once? You still have a job to do. But if you want to learn anything more from me, now is the time. And I'm sure we'll end up seeing more of each other before you're through. Do I just pick a random story? Uh, this was very curious. Well, no, that was his brother. Do I still have the actual lounge singer? Oh, let me... I want to tell him the story about the, the fish man conundrum. Maybe I can get some kind of information. Some more information about the world building. I'm pretty sure I put it in here. Here it is. I just overlooked it. There's so much here. Have you seen the vastness? The fields and the deserts and the lakes and the woods looming mountains and the vast canyons. It feels like too much for one place to contain. Okay, I guess I just pick whatever story. Do you think people are trapped in this country, shackled to the land? Or trapped by this country, perhaps, seduced into believing it has all that they need and that none will ever be better? What is a good story to tell him next? Do you have faith in the dream still? Or for the first time? Like the American dream? Is there another dream that we could build? A better one for everyone? I believe so. It's like there's a big aching wound out there. I wonder if this country has ever been anything but sad. Oh, Mr. Wolf speaketh the truth. He is by far the most mysterious. People love this country, but in so many ways. Unrequited, passionate, desperate, innocently, despite it all. Go on your way, Seeker. 
I'm sure we'll meet at least once more. At least once more? Does that mean he's only got one more chapter left for me and I need to watch my stats all the more closely? Because I don't want to meet him again too soon. I would like to get through another good chunk of characters. Think about what we've discussed. I, I honestly, I haven't been able to stop thinking about it. And good luck on the rest of your task. Oh, we've got absolutely no health. <laughs> can we afford anything? We can get some more quesadillas or a sandwich. Um, let's go. Oh, wait a minute. Before I spend my money, it had the heart icon over me, but did I? Okay, I guess that last encounter refilled me and I don't have to worry about it, mayhaps. I believe there was a stat boost house nearby. Oh well. These fellows are lounging in the front of the half-finished office building, taking their lunch break. Hey! One calls, waving you down. Rick here was telling us this story. Listen, okay? And you tell us if it's BS or not. Sure. Rick, a credulous seaman fellow, starts telling you a story about the wild man of the forest. You realize it's the story of the stranger in the woods, but changed in a few major ways. So it's definitely part BS, right? But also a little real? It's not BS. Half the group groans. How the heck is that supposed to be a real story? Exclaimed the man who waves you down. You're all the most gullible pieces I ever met. The other half of the group of indicated shares a bottle of pop with you. Move on. Okay, so we need to get to Rocio, but we need to get around these effing mountains. <laughs> that would have been a nice thing to perhaps add onto the topographic map. Though I suppose the roads, the main roads, would give me an indication of where I could pass through said mountain ranges. But... Oh, uh, we went- I guess we went back down to the last city we were at. Okay, so maybe we can not get caught between the mountains. Let's see if we can go, like, maybe just curve back around through Texas and not have to take this long way up here. We'll see. We'll see. Yes, this was definitely the, <laughs> the way I needed to go the first time. Why don't we, uh, why don't we add on to our plethora of stories in the comments? If anyone watching this would like to leave a comment down below with your own story. It could be something small, something big, something personal, something strange. Something that you might think would be a good addition to this in-game universe. Because... What I've learned from this game is all stories, big or small, are very important. A preacher watches you with an odd look, suspicion, pity. He beckons you into the church and starts counting cash out of the donations box. Hush, he says, trying to silence your thanks. He piles the coins into your hand. You look like you need it more than we do. Thank you. Move on. Okay, Rocio is right there in front of us. I see another story off to the right. What I'm going to do, I'm going to grab that story and immediately add it to my inventory. And then I'm going to take a moment to shuffle through my stories and see if I can get the most, you know, newest stories or ones that I've just not told enough and keep those in my inventory. Because, um, Rocio, this is chapter three. He might undergo a transformation. And we want to be ready. We want to have as many, you know, untold stories as possible at our disposal. The racetrack lawn is a sea of hats. Boaters, bowlers, berets, and cloches. Nearby, some gentlemen mumble to each other. That she-demon Petunia. She wins another race. I'm out of house and home. Bet straight on Petunia or Watch Race. 
Uh, I feel like this is luring me into a false sense of security. I'm, I'm just gonna watch the race. The horses run inches apart and kick up dust thicker than a morning fog. You depend on excited folks with binoculars to narrate the action. As the herd rounds a bend, you glimpse Petunia on the outside. She gallops with pride and determination. Cheer for Petunia. You hoot and holler for that fierce filly. Petunia falls behind on bends, but drives ahead in straights. She sprints around the home turn into a dead heat with a frenzied colt. The crowd stands on their toes. The finish line nears. Come on, Petunia! Petunia tears past the wire. The gentleman you overheard earlier stomps on his fedora. As a judge adorns Petunia with a wisteria garland, she sniffs his pockets in search of treats. Aw, move on. Petunia the racehorse. All right, I'm going to uh, do a fade transition here and I'm gonna shuffle my stories around for a bit. Okay, I think we have a nice selection of stories now. This farmer is loitering beside a couple crates of berries, idly watching the clouds go by. Waiting for the pickup, he says, trying to make small talk. Hey, you want to hear a wild story? Absolutely. He starts telling you about the cursed camera brimming with stolen souls. It takes a couple minutes, but suddenly you recognize it as the story about the camera which killed those it photographed. Whoever told it to the farmer changed, well, a lot, but it's still pretty good. Where'd you hear that story? Oh, I can't remember, he says. I think I've known it for years, since I was a boy, for sure. Hmm, that can't be right. We're gonna leave him with his tail. You thank him for his story and start to mosey off down the road. Keep cool, friend, he calls after you. All right. All right, Rocio. I think, I think we're ready. Let's find out. Oh, here we go. <gasps> I'm happy to see you again. It feels like years have passed. Years of energy once wasted, now keeping me alive with purpose. He's a scarecrow? I would have never imagined myself being here with my faith resolute among crowds of new friends and compatriotas. My mother and son's presence with me, easing the pain in my hands and in my body. A blessing from God and from my Lady of Guadalupe gracing me with determination. I move with my hermanas y hermanos as one, and my soul is one, free from the ire of my past. I never thought I'd see myself like this, and I weep with joy that I am. I like that, you know, Althea kind of set me up or preemptively set me up into thinking that everyone was going to have like this horrifying monster transformation and I was half expecting the the devil in the suit to also be a part of this graphic um like Althea but it's really nice that not all of the characters turn into horrifying dark creatures I mean this is still I feel I feel what the symbolism is, but I'm having a hard time conveying my thoughts into words. So I'm not even going to try to elaborate on that right now. Let's see if we can get any more information as we hear more of his story. Now, tell me a sad story, a true one. Oh, such sadness. I wish they had someone there to comfort them. The future. It's hard to say what will happen tomorrow or the day after. Before, it was a routine, a cruel cycle. Now, I do not know. But isn't that exciting? Though I still wallow in the poverty I grew up in, my future couldn't be more enriched. 
Maybe you have a good hopeful story to tell? That one, it sounds untrue. Did you make it up? Oh, I'm not sure what's... Uh, I think the original unnerving lounge singer story was hopeful. But I don't know about his brother, huh? The bosses, they will try to stop us. If there's one thing I learned from the road, it's that even the kindest of faces mean the worst intentions. It is these policias, these men of justice, that I find hard to trust. What a world we live in where such sentences are being said truthfully and honestly. But that's how it is. Please share a story of hope with me. Okay, we have a chance to redeem ourselves. What a good story. I will remember it for a while. I know. The past, it's all behind me now. All I care about now is the past that I'll be building on my own from here on out. Please share a story of hope with me. What a wonderful story. We need stories like this to give us strength. My family? I received a letter back from Ana Maria. She says she's well, and she's now living with relatives in Laredo. The last few words almost made my corazón stop. It wasn't Ana's handwriting. Oh, that's ominous. I wait for you, Madre Mía. May God bless you with amor. Tu hijo, my son. Oh, okay, never mind. It's not ominous. It was great because his son wrote him a letter. Ah. Now, tell me a funny story. Make me laugh. <gasps> oh, how funny. Thank you. It is not often that I can laugh. We have chosen to do powerful work here together. And soon, others will have to choose too. People will not care for our struggle, see it as petty, inutile, useless. We know the truth. It couldn't be more real, more open for everyone to see. What they see as a mere disturbance couldn't be a more relatable fight for common good. Someday they will learn and understand. I am sure of it. Well, I must go. I am sorry to leave our conversation unfinished. I hope you will be safe on the road. I hope you'll be safe on the road too, and I cannot wait to talk to you again. We are all so blessed to be here, in this time, in this place. My friend, we will change the world. Because you can't do it alone. That's so powerful. Oh, all these characters. I am I am attached and adoring all of these characters, except Dupree. Dupree is the only one that sucks. <laughs> oh, where should we go next? I've never done a live stream before, but I feel like this game would be really fun in a live stream. So you can like chat with people while you're, you know, making your rounds and they can give you uh, tips or suggestions on where to go next and they can tell you your own stories, which is why I would love to hear your own stories in the comments down below. All right, I think what we're going to do, we're just going to go straight north Maybe, maybe we'll meet uh, Dahaya again if we end up that way due to some unforeseen uh, mountain ranges and landscape that alters our route. 
but I feel like we could make a beeline up there to August and then maybe see if there's any more stories hidden in Nebraska and Kansas because surely, surely they have more than just one single story. But let's find out. A long black car growls up in front of this hotel, out steps a woman in an extravagant hat and coat, followed by a crowd of hangers-on. Is she a singer? An actress? You don't recognize her face, but to your surprise, you recognize the story she's telling. Listen in. In a sharp transatlantic accent, she tell she's telling everyone in her party a story about the wandering man murdered by his romantic rival. It's clearly the story of, a of the dead man of the abandoned railway, but changed in a few entertaining ways. Keep listening in. Isn't that something, she asks. Her various followers agree. She pays the driver of the limousine and sweeps into the hotel like a thunderstorm of red velvet. Someone should do a picture about it, you hear her exclaim. Move on. The man wears a fine <gasps> cotton suit, clean as a whistle, like the dust and dirt of travel just don't stick. Could I have a moment, traveler? A kindness for your fellow man. I've seen you before, and you're most certainly not a man. But I'll play along. As you draw closer to him, a vibrant fragrance enriches your nostrils. Notes of jasmine, citrus, and... Is that sandalwood? No. Birch tar. Have you seen a jailbird around? Usual black and white stripes. A woman. Jailbird? The man doesn't elaborate much. She has a debt to settle. That's all. I have coins for your trouble. I too have a debt to settle with someone in your family. Hmm. Went that away. Well, I don't know that for sure. I haven't seen her. The air feels hotter, like the sun just passed between some clouds. Is that right? No one at all by that description. Before you've finished hearing his words, the man's gone. And where he stood is a ring of scorched grass. Yep, I'm I'm kind of glad I did not accept money from him. So let's move on from that. Wow. Yeah, we've seen your face before, sir. This half-finished house provides good shelter from the wind, and the construction workers are already packing up their tools for the day. One of them sees you sneaking in, but just gives you a wink. Try the basement, he suggests. His advice is good. You find a spot for a long, cool rest. Move on. These men lean against the wall of this hardware store, smoking and chatting. They wave you over. You heard this one before? They launch into a group recitation of the trees that sing stories of those departed from Los Angeles, interrupting one another in their excitement to tell it. Wait a second. You recognize the story. It's the story about the lingering voices of the repatriados in Los Angeles. Someone's added to it in the meantime, though. What do you think? Asks one of the men, eyes bright. Do you think that really happened? Of course! Well, I'm not sure myself, he replies, but dang, it sounds wild. Move on. Oh, look at this beautiful triangle of stories up here. It's perfect. The old man sits on an upturned bucket, looking out over the tracks. His hands tremble and his head shakes, but he is smiling. The growing dark 
The efforts of a young station hand to send him home do nothing to deter him. The old man waves the boy away. Move closer. That's it. You've nothing to fear. The old man winks. Keep me company? The others laughed, but they all found reasons to leave. He chuckles, wheezes, and wipes blood from his mouth. It's a nice night. The catadids are beautiful. Couldn't have asked for more. Ask why he is here. I'm here to die. He takes your hand in his weak grip. Heard the whistle. 1159. Thought I'd meet it at the station. Wouldn't want to make it late. He straightens his tie. Never been on a train I didn't work on. Nice to see what it's like. Okay, hold up. The token that I believe we got from Franklin's story was a pocket watch that stopped at 11.59. It was a broken pocket watch, but the time stopped at 11.59. Check the time. He sees you looking for the station clock and checks his watch. It's 11.55. Don't let me keep you. I don't know if they'll take extra passengers, but you might not want to find out. He looks anxious. Better leave if you're gonna. Okay, so if this is the same pocket watch, or if Franklin is on this train, this man is going to die. I can either leave or stay with him. If I stay with him, am I going to be transported elsewhere? Or... Oh, I don't know. I don't know what to pick! Okay, as much as I want to... I am so curious. I'm so curious. I'm gonna stay with him. He shouts as if compensating for loud noise. It's coming! The caddy did sing, but that's it. He points. There! A train, intangible as steam, glides silently down the track. It slows and pulls up. Help the old man stand. The old man leans heavily on your arm. He squeezes your hand once and lets go. He goes to climb onto the train, accepts the hand that is offered to help him in. The train is gone. The old man is lying on the ground. He is dead. He is smiling. Tick. It is midnight. Yes. Okay. So this is this is a train. Um, it collected his soul, left his body behind. It, it correlates with the pocket watch that Franklin gave us. Oh, that is so wild. Oh, I'm glad we stayed. Oh my goodness. Oh, that's so good. This man can barely wait to get through the pleasantries before asking if you've heard this story. 110% true, he says. I heard it from my nephew and it happened to someone he knows well. Well, sure. The man launches into his telling. It's polished. He's obviously done this many times before. He tells you the story of the travelers who move at the speed of a snail. You recognize the bones of it from your experience of the slow going cart. It's been embellished in the interim though. Listen to the tale. Afterwards, you thank the man and move onwards. You'll have to remember that version, even if it's not quite what happened. It's a good story. Move on. And real quick, I want to put all these new stories. I want to immediately put them into our inventory. Oh, I could have sworn it was here. Yes. The row of buildings looked abandoned from the outside, but a man scrambles to his feet as you come through the door. Red rims his eyes, and his whole body is wound taut. Whoa, whoa, whoa! No closer! 
He brandishes the tool at you. You tell Daggett I'll get his money. Daggett? The only Daggett I know is a beaver. He looks you up and down and lowers his impromptu weapon. You see the tremor in his hands. He's scared or exhausted. Sorry, I, I thought you were... It doesn't matter. You mind your own. Are you in trouble? I can handle myself. I, I just needed to make sure I had eaten money until I found work. He sniffs. These people don't like it when you're late. Why not leave or any work going? Only for loan sharks. He rubs his eyes. I go a few towns over or I might find something. These people ain't the understanding type. They'll think I'm skipping out on the debt. He waves a hand. You should go. Anyone asks, you never saw me. Leave. As you walk back down the street, a couple of dark figures emerge from one of the doorways. They look you over, and one speaks in a smoker's rasp. You. Seen anyone around here? A big guy? Well, a big guy, that's a subjective statement. I'm gonna say no. <sighs> he says. Well, if you see someone, mind how you go. This ain't a good place to be after dark. Move on. The huge farm dogs bark hysterically. A scent pervades the air, rich and salty, with a tang that fills your mouth with saliva. No wonder the dogs are wild. The burlap sacks hanging from this tree are stained carmine. They drip. Man near the tree shouts. What? The dogs are too loud. He bellows. Mind where you step. Don't want that in your shoes. Puddles of blood congeal below the tree. The man points proudly at the bags. Curing them, but could just bite into one right now. The dogs throw themselves against the gate. It shudders. Are the dogs safe? Nah, they're just big pups. They won't do themselves any harm. The gate groans. Hank, you'll come back this way? You want to try the meat when it's ready? The gate rattles off its hinges. It crashes to the ground. Three slavering dogs rush towards you. And now if I climb the tree, they are most certainly not going to leave me alone because of the bags hanging there but if I'm, I'm going to run you sprint pumping your arms and legs till your lungs burn and your feet feel like lead the dogs didn't catch you they weren't trying they're back with the tree and the man you can't hear screaming he's probably fine but this isn't a place to hang around uh, I completely forgot about the man there. I was just looking after myself. <laughs> Whoops. Move on. All right, I have successfully added the all those three new stories that we picked up to my inventory. So let us go talk to August. Crouch that sunk my ship took most of my side in the blast. Oh my gosh. Is that an albatross? Oh, and the hand coming out of the... Oh my... Oh my gosh. Came home. Couldn't work. Couldn't read. But I could drink. That I could do. Easy as falling off a log. And I could lose my family. I could do that, too. But you tell me, what's the wildest thing you've seen on the roads out here? 
Anything good and exciting? Sure. <laughs> That's the kind of adventure that sticks with you. Freedom. Yeah, I got nothing holding me back now. Just me and the bottle and the road. So did he... Did he not die literally? He died figuratively? Or he lost everything at sea? Or so he thought. He lost sight of what he had back home. And succumbed to mourning. Like, survivor's guilt. So I miss them blood-pounding adventure stories. You got any like that? I ain't getting the joke. Okay, I didn't know if that was gonna be a funny story. This country. Navy wouldn't have me, but the Mariners would, until they wouldn't. Okay, so I retract my statement earlier saying that he was uh, a part of the Navy. That was not the case. Yeah, because he couldn't, he said he couldn't fight for his country because of his poor eyesight. Durr. What's it say about a country if it breaks its people and throws them away? Anyhow, you got any stories that end looking up? I miss those hopeful ones. Leaves a warm feeling in your chest, huh? Heaven, I was drinking the night my Louisa left. Didn't notice till two dames and a lick of bottles later. Lost in my little slice of heaven. But you know, the books I miss the most is the hopeful ones. Got any of those? Well, that one sure makes me smile. Fate's funny. My daddy knew my old story before I did. Said if I read those story magazines, I'd never amount to anything. Here's to you, Pop. Anyhow, you got any stories that end looking up? I miss those hopeful ones. Oh, August. Leaves a warm feeling in your chest, huh? Joy? Well, I had a kind of fun, I guess. I'd go out with old pals to the juice joint, laugh enough to beat the band, flirt with dames. Louise is waiting at home, but I don't care about nothing. I'm tanked. Oh. Morning's here. I've got to get going. If you find yourself out this way, you and I might meet again. I've got more to share about what brought me to the bottom of this bottle. And you're a good one to share it with. Think of me on the road, all right? <sighs> Hang in there, August. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and leave this episode of Where the Water Tastes Like Wine here. We are up now to 187 stories. We're creeping up there. Um, and we still have a long way to go as far as um, getting to all of these characters. But thank you so much for joining me. Please leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. And I hope to see you next time. Bye!